Yes, and North Korea is obviously our top story this morning. Let's bring in the senators, Pauline Hanson and Sarah Hanson Young, who are both in Canberra this morning. Thanks for joining us. Pauline, just how concerned are you about North Korea's H bomb test? Uh, pretend you're our foreign minister. Would you be doing anything different? Um, Koshi, you're asking me a difficult question here. I have not been briefed on it. For me to actually make a comment what I would do about it would be irresponsible of me in my position now. I can't speculate um, on this and I wouldn't. We have to actually listen to you know, Julie Bishop, the Foreign Minister, plus also what the Trump government is going to do about this. Something does need to be done. I think he's, he's just absolutely rogue and I, I think the people really probably don't understand, his people in North Korea don't really understand the impact that he is having on the rest of the world because they're not informed. They don't mm. get internet so they don't know what's going on. But sanctions is what is Russia going to do, um, what is China going to do? You know, probably Australia and, and the United States are all going to be out there on their own. I hope mm. this doesn't eventuate into bringing Russia and China um, back in North Korea into the world war. It needs to be handled. Mm very sensitively. It sounds yep. like China is cracking down at this point mm. in the game. Uh, so. Sarah Hanson-Young, would you support military action? Um, Malcolm Turnbull told us last week, we are an ally, a major ally of America. If they go in, we'll be with them. Look, I think, um, of course, what's going on in um, North Korea is very scary, and it's increasingly so. Um, the question of military action, however, um, I think is, is, is even scarier, to be honest, because we know that it's a very tightly pa packed peninsula. Um, the cost of human life would be horrific. And uh, we need to be finding a diplomatic solution to this. Um, the uh, impact of sanctions, I think we need to um, really consider um, uh, whether that is working, what more we can do in that space. Um, but let me say this, you know, the idea that um, this be led by Donald Trump of all people, I think people right across the world are very, very nervous um, that uh, Donald Trump just does not have the maturity or the level head to carry this out. It's going to have to be other countries as well. Um, and, uh, being very careful, um, watching this, taking cool-headed decisions. Uh, Donald Trump is too trigger-happy to be allowed to um, run rogue himself in response. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Closer to home, the West Australian Goldfields has now been chosen as the third site to trial these cashless welfare cards. The welfare cards that have been trialled in two other outback communities and with great success. Um, Sarah Hanson Young, with those first two trials labelled real turnarounds for those communities, why do the Greens want to stop the program being rolled out nationally? Well, look, we're really concerned that actually if you scratch the surface, um, the stories um, in these communities is that this welfare card isn't working properly. In fact, what it's created is a black market. Um, and uh, we know that that doesn't go any way uh, to dealing with the issues of poverty or indeed substance abuse or, or, or family but breakdown. But Sarah, the numbers speak reflect... for themselves. I... The, the, uh, I... the rates of domestic violence are massively down. Well... The rates of grog abuse are massively down. I've... In South Australia, we've got the welfare card um, in in, uh, in the town of Sejuna. I've yeah. been to that town. I've spoken to the local community there, from shopkeepers through to local councillors through to local Indigenous communities. And um, the stories are very, very different to those statistics that the government is rolling out. But I just wanted to raise one point, because I was emailed um, on Friday from a woman named Kaylee. She knew that um, you guys were talking about this this morning, this issue of um, obligations for accessing New Start, and she really wanted to point out, as somebody who is on New Start, um, that there are compulsory obligations on people. Every day she's looking for jobs, she's having to apply for jobs, and mm. she's sick and That's tired, good. Koshi, of being labelled as just a dull budger. She feels like she's doing everything she can, and when she looks at Parliament and she sees those rowdy MPs misbehaving, uh, she says, well, hang on a minute, why do I hold up my end of the bargain when our politicians aren't holding okay. up theirs? All right, uh, I can understand that. You've cherry-picked one story though, uh, one person's story. Pauline, 
The facts, though, are that these welfare cards have worked well they, in these communities. They are working, Koshi. They well and truly are. It was over about eight months ago I had a meeting at, in Parliament House, actually dinner, with the elders and the communities from Kununurra plus also Seduna. They actually uh, they are so pleased with the card. They say now the communities have had a turnaround. There's no, not so much domestic violence. Um, kids are going to school. They are actually eating decent meals. They're buying good food for dinner for the table. Uh, it is actually working. It's, a, it's um, also the drugs aren't a, as big an issue. It's still there, but it has addressed it. As far as Kalgoorlie, I went there as well. I spoke to the council. They have a huge problem with the Aboriginals, and they said there is over 700 agencies, over 700 that we are funding. Now these agencies are not working at the times that needs to, that meets the um, needs to meet the concerns of the locals of the Aboriginals. So they are open only certain hours, but most of the problems are at night time. So they're not addressing the drugs, they're not addressing, you know, the housing, they're not addressing the health care or the kids. So what, what we're doing is we're just pouring all more taxpayers' dollars into these agencies. They're not working. What has worked is the card. It does need to be rolled out Australia-wide. Sarah Hanson Young has no idea. I'm sick of the bleeding hearts in this country that are not really looking at how we are going to address this problem. Pouring well, more money is not the answer to it. So I it think does work and they are admitted. And blaming and admitted people that. for the fact that the government hasn't provided enough jobs for working people who desperately want to get back to Sarah, the Sarah, it, do it. You don't it is not the government that provides the jobs. Let's get this right. The government doesn't provide the jobs. It is the government putting in place the, the um, reasons why people should go and start up their own businesses because small business creates mm. about 85% oh. of the jobs. So the fact is the governments haven't been doing the job. All Greens want to do is shut down business, shut down industries, and what you want to do to... Well, that's you, are not you are not that's providing rubbish, the jobs Pauline. in you this country. Rubbish. Now, the whole fact is... The these, well, these are what are you real doing? You're just real beating up on unemployed people. And this is what the, these communities, listen to the elders. I've spoken to them. I've spent time to them. I've been to these as communities. I, as have I, So Pauline. I know exactly. And, and I think the you just blaming all Aboriginals for this problem is not really, really a, most, uh, a Sarah, very mature don't, way don't about throw it. that in. You wouldn't have a clue what you're talking about. I didn't blame anyone, the Aboriginals whatsoever, so don't pull that bloody stunt on me. I've had an full of that for the last 20 <laughs> years. The whole fact is, this is Everybody the truth that is happening in these communities. Everybody knows that you're very, very narrow when it comes to and this And this, this is what needs to be done, and I'm fully behind them. And actually, I just had a meeting again just a few weeks ago, the last sitting in the Parliament, with Twiggy Forrest and uh, some more elders, and they are fully behind it. I questioned them, and they said, yes, please help us. We need this help and assistance. So I'm listening to the Aboriginals and the elders. All right. <clears throat> Ladies, come back to yes. us. OK, <laughs> I want to, we want to ask you about this question, uh, this, this story that's in the papers today. Malcolm Turnbull has launched an expletive ridden assessment of Tony Abbott aboard a VIP plane. Uh, when, this is back when, when Tony Abbott was still in a PM. Pauline, it, so, it sounds like they'd all had a few drinks and it got a bit out of hand. And there are a few witness reports here that Malcolm did mm. really give it to Tony Abbott. Does it sound like the Malcolm Turnbull you know? Uh, look, to tell you the truth, Sam, I haven't read the story. I'm not up to date with it. You know, you know, some things that happened in the past, you know, keep it in the past as far as I'm concerned. And um, we're not all perfect and we have our moments. And I just think, keep it private. Mm. Why put it out there in the public? What, what good is it doing anyone? You know, yeah. I, it's another attack on the lips. I just think it's, it's unwarranted. Sarah, have you ever heard Malcolm Turnbull <laughs> swear? Should, should the lips have a swear jar? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they should have a swear jar and it had helped towards, you know, um, uh, some, some of the, uh, the issues when it comes to the government budget. But look, I, I think the issue here is Malcolm Turnbull's probably not the only person who's um, sworn a few words about Tony Abbott in the Liberal Party. Uh, I think the reality is uh, Tony Abbott has been um, a pain in the backside uh, for uh, so long now. He should have retired long ago. It's time he gave up the game. He's an annoying to everybody. He's doing very little for his local community and um, I think um, bye bye Tony Abbott that's what needs to happen. Okay all right senators thank you for joining us see you next week. Thanks guys cheers.